Hi everyone, in the modern digital age, search engines have become an essential tool for finding information on the internet. Google, the world's leading search engine, uses complex algorithm known as PageLink. PageLink, which relies heavily on concept from linear algebra, is a prime example of how mathematical theory can be applied to solve real-world problems. Then hi, I'm Muhammad bin Oval from Hassan University, and together we will explore the topic about harnessing linear algebra for page rank. Apart from being a semi-final assignment project, this project is also aims to provide a deeper understanding of the algorithm that underpins Google's search engine ranking system. And without further ado, let's do it! First, we will try to understand what the definition of PageRank itself. Basically, PageRank functions like a voting system. You can see a directed path from the yellow page to the red page. It means that the yellow page has an outgoing link to the red page. Or in another means, it refers to that page. When one page links to another page, it gets a vote for the link page. And from this, when we pick one of the pages, say yellow page, click on one of its link and connect to another page. Then, we repeat the procedure and tracks how many times we visit each page in the set after 10 clicks, 100 clicks, and so on. The more fast a page receives, the higher its page rank, and the higher its rank, the more relevance and importance the page. So, that's for the introduce, let's move on to something more complex. Yeah, it's the application of linear algebra in this algorithm. First, without loss of generality, assume we have 5 given pages containing keywords on a topic of common interest, with directed path like so. From here, we convert it into a graph form by giving each page a different number, and notice that we disregard links to or from page outside the 5 given page, and links from a page to itself, and also duplicate links. All of this is to ensuring the relevance and accuracy of the page rank calculation. And next, we define the adjacency matrix of the web graph. That's matrix with entry AIJ is 1 if the J page have an ongoing link to I, and 0 for otherwise. And from that definition, now we have our matrix A like this. And next, again, we make the following definition. The stat vector xk is the n by 1 column vector whose i entry is the probability that the server is on the i page after current numerous clicks. To illustrate this idea, if we know with certainty that we begin surfing from page 2, that means we are on the second page after zero most click. Then our initial vector x0 will be like this. And then take a look on the product ax0. The unit entries of AX0 tell us that from page 2, we have the option of going to either page 1, 4, or 5, since these are the only pages to which there are outgoing links. And assuming that we choose outgoing links randomly, each of these three pages will have probability 1 over 3 of being chosen, right? And then, to formalize this idea, we make the following definition. Is the matrix obtained by dividing each entry of an adjacency matrix with the sum of the entries in the same column. By this definition, we can get our probability transition matrix associated with our adjacency matrix will be like this. This matrix shows the probability of randomly moving from one page to another with the most click. For example, if we start on page 2, our initial state factor will be and next, our stat vector after one most click will be this. And then we find out that our stat vector resulting from successive most clicks will form into the sequence. And it's called Markov chain. And then it follows from this sequence that our successive state vectors rounded to 4 decimal place will be like this. This, this, and so on. And next, the important part, as we know k mean the number of most clicks that increases without both. If we accept that when k goes to infinity 
and the state factor xk approaches some factor x, then it follows from the sequence that we can get this equality. And look at this, this is an eigenvector of b corresponding to the eigenvalue, which is 1. And notice that, if x is scaled so that the entry sum to 1, its entries represent the fraction of times each space is visited, which is our goal. So let's find the solution of x and normalize it. First, we do some algebra to get the form of homogeneous linear system. And then, we can use n method to solve it, but now I'm going to use gauss jordan elimination. So we construct an augmented matrix and do some elementary row operation as we usually don't if we use this method. Yeah, we sum first row to the third row and multiply the first row with minus 1 and so on until we get, yeah, the reduced row is excellent form. Finally, we have the solution for x. And to normalize it, divide each entry by the sum of all entries. Find S as this reciprocal of this sum. Then apply S. This gives us what we want. The valid probability distribution factor. For example, this factor implies that the page 3 is expected to be visited 27% of the time. So when we sort it, then we have what are we looking for? The page rank, and the higher its rank, the more relevance and importance the page. So after all of that, are we finished now? No. Actually, there is some case when the surf will be trapped as you can see, and by that, the fractional page count for red page will approach zero. This is called as periodic case. Or the other case when the web graph consists of two or more unlinked page clusters. In this case, the initial state factor have zero probabilities for all of the pages in one of the clusters, and it's called a reducible case. So, the solution to this problem is to let the server randomly choose any page with a certain probability, instead of just following current page links. Specifically, we assume that there is a delta probability, and we call it the damping factor. So, Delta is probability that the server will go to the next page by choosing a link on the current page. Or in our previous case, the delta value is 1. And the complement 1 minus delta is probability that the server will choose the next page at random. If there are n pages in the network or in the web graph, then in the later case, probability that the server will choose any particular page at random is 1 minus delta over n. Next, to implement this idea, we create a new probability transition matrix M in which, or it also can be written as this. As an example, let's do it with our reducible case. As usual, we convert to the graph form and make the adjacency matrix of it, and then yeah, the transition matrix. And from this, you should know this one fact that. Google found through experiment that a delta value of around 0.85 gives a good result in practice. So we choose value of delta equal to 0.85. And by definition of our new probability transition matrix, we obtain our matrix M like this. For next, we just do the same thing as earlier. This M is matrix transition for the Markov chains and the state vector will convert to some factor x and find the solution of x we get just normalize it, divide it by sum of the entry and then we get our final valid probability for each page and what it means from this case, we know if we search about something in some search engine say google such that it pop up the 6 pages it will be something like this the black page must be the first page according to the page rank, and the same goes for others. So that's all for the list, I will say, grasping this algorithm demonstrates the critical role of mathematical principles in solving real-world problems, proving that math is a powerful tool for creating innovative solutions in this digital age. Thanks for your time, hope you all like this. I'm Muhammad Himinaufal and see you in another competition.